Hello and welcome to Hiblio TV. My name is Paul Norris and I'm your host for today's conversation. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for popping back. It's great to have your company. Today I talk to artist and military veteran John McDermott about how art can be used as a gateway in discovering the present moment and how this is helping former and serving military personnel with their mental well-being. Welcome John. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Great to have you on the programme. There's been lots of interest across social media in today's programme. I think we're going to bring in an audience of different backgrounds. You're going to bring your art community, veterans have plugged in. Mm -hmm. um, and because we're talking about the art of now and being in that moment, mm. um, people from business are going to be tuning in, no doubt. So Good. thanks mm. very much. Oh, uh, thank you. It's, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here, Paul, honestly, and I've been really looking forward to this interview all week. Great, <laughs> great. So if you could just start by just telling the audience a bit about yourself. Uh, well, uh, I joined the, the Navy in 1972 when I was 15 years old, and I left uh, in the year 2000, so that was 16 years ago. Then after that, uh, when I left the Navy, I went up to London. I was head of security at the Old Bailey for eight years. Then after that, I've been more or less a painter. Right, but painting, if I remember from our early conversation in preparation for today, it's always been a big theme of your life. It's been a constant throughout my life. That's something that's always been there and never left me. Even through all those years I was in the Navy and even uh, as head of security up at the Old Bailey, that was the other side of me. And that was something I was always pursuing because I knew that one day I wanted to do this, and I, I, you know, and I was working towards uh, mm. doing that uh, throughout my career in the Navy and also at the Old Bailey. And at yeah. a very young age, you, uh, I remember, uh, you had a, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Glasgow School of Art. So you had oh, an yeah. opportunity to go into the Glasgow School Absolutely, of Art. Absolutely, yes I did. But actually, yeah, I got, I got it might have been a father that said, actually, you're off to, off to the Navy. No, it wasn't that at all. Uh, you know, I mean, I come from a place called Blantyre, uh, which is just to the south of Glasgow. Uh, back in those days, 1972, uh, the economic situation up there was ridiculous, mm. you know, looking back now. Uh, the jobs that people could uh, walk into were no longer there, so job security, all that sort of thing. It just wasn't there. And at 15 year, uh, years old, uh, the only option I had, really, uh, was to get out, really, to get mm. out of it. Uh, there was nothing on offer. But uh, I did get that offer to uh, attend the Glasgow School of Art. It was a, a marvellous thing. But again, I was still 15. My age was against me. I was too young, yeah. you know, really. So it was all academic studies and all that before I could do touch a paintbrush, really. Mm. So the, the Glasgow School of Art, God bless them. You know what I mean? I had to, you know, say, wave goodbye. And uh, I went down the road to West Nile Street in Glasgow and joined up. OK, <laughs> so, so you joined up and you travelled into that took you across the globe and it sometimes did. into major conflict it's zones. Several, yeah. So we we know that PTSD has been a part of your your journey. Yes, uh, well PTSD, you know, it's just an abbreviation. The operative word there is D for disorder, and a lot of servicemen who suffer from severe traumatic uh, stress, you know, tend not to say, you know use PTSD too often because it kind of a, gives it a clinical feel to it. It's, uh, it's something that's happened to the person. It's not something that uh, is within the person to begin with. It's something that's happened to you. And it takes a long time to come to, uh, you know, to, come to terms uh. with uh, that sort of thing. Especially when you're in the military because you're trained and indoctrinated to stand tall, walk tall, be a team player. And uh, if you're a leader, lead. And uh, if you're suffering from something like that, you know what I mean? It's only a matter of time before you have to give it up. Yeah, really. and we've had that, that actually that can manifest itself for, for a long time, you know, recognising the symptoms and reaching out to uh, get yes, that help. Yes, absolutely. It, it can take years. You know, if I use myself as an example here, and I don't mind talking about it, and I've spoken about it so often now, but uh, besides from the personal effects that it has in your life, uh, it grows on you after a while. If it, if it goes unrecognised, if you don't acknowledge it, you don't recognise it and do something about it and just carry on trying to uh, survive within that environment, well, you will for a while. You know, I mean, you'll crack on and you'll, you'll mm. do it because uh, the military is a high octane environment anyway, so everybody looks a bit stressed. Mm. You know, so you're just part of uh, 
that environment. So what's the painting, if we're talking about you dealing with those stresses and anxieties while you're in a service, mm. did art help you during that or did it help you more with, with when you came outside? No, during, I've got to say, uh, you know, I mean, it first came out to me big style back in the early 90s. I just returned from a trip from Cambodia with the UN. And uh, it's, it's a place long forgotten now in the world press. Mm. But uh, at that time, it was still in a state of a huge transition. And it was very stressful. But I almost lost my life out there uh, three times. And uh, when I got back home, I just wasn't the same person who I was. Uh, and I knew I'd been through some life-changing event and it was now manifesting itself in me through stress and through severe anxiety, you know, thinking that you're going to drop down dead any, you know, any second. Mm. It's, a, it's an awful, awful thing. And uh, I could have put my hand up then and said, look, I need help. Okay. Help me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't live, uh, the, the services just weren't ready for people putting their hands up and saying that, you know. Uh, the, not like today, the, you know, the awareness of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is light years away from what it was back in the early 90s. But uh, I, I just carried on with it as best I could and just survive it. But you knew that it was slowly going downhill. Uh, friends that you had seen the differences in you and were saying, you all right, Joanna? Yeah, 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 you're always okay, you're always okay. And uh, you're the, you are the complete and total opposite of okay. You're not okay. So at your face all. was saying a different thing on how yeah. you actually were. But the painting did come yeah. into it in a big style. That, that, you know, to answer the question properly, uh, I've been very lucky because I did have uh, art to fall back on, and that's something that I did. And I would uh, squirrel myself away and go and draw and go and paint. And uh, I recognised that when I drew and when I painted, th this is something I didn't recognise before. I lost track of time. Mm -hmm. I could start painting, say, about 8 o'clock at night, and then before I knew it, it'd be about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I would not have noticed a minute go by. You were totally and wholly in the present moment. And that's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're being going to talk in this about present moment. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's only, you know, around about 2008, I had a major breakdown uh, where I just couldn't go any further. You know, I really needed to help by then. Uh, and then this is when the art played uh, a bigger role in my life because I realised that by, by painting I could enter this state of awareness where time doesn't matter at all. Mm. Time, you know, time is meaningless, you know, it's just a human construct. And, uh, so when you were painting, just thinking yeah. about that, you know, when I naturally think, and I've not been in the services, so I don't mean anything, just, you know, I just haven't been in that kind of place before, sure. but one would imagine that actually the paintings, were they dark, kind of in colours, <laughs> you know, as, as you were getting emotions out, or, you know... Sometimes. Right. Uh, my art chops and changes, you know, I mean, I, I, I run from different subjects all the time, you know, I mean, I don't have a linear uh, set of paintings that uh, exemplifies mm. some sort of progression. I will, anything that takes my interest, I will tackle it, you know, and use the skills that I've developed over the years in order to uh, bring it into the open. Yeah. So for those that are tuning in, mindfulness, how, how would we describe that, that, that kind of being in, in that present moment? Because I know all too often, we can easily just rush through life. We're almost on a digital program, you know, the, the same routine every day. And actually, yeah. this is about almost stopping is and it, noticing yes. the stuff around you. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're living in such a, uh, such a hectic pace. The world is at the moment everywhere, mm. no matter where you go. Uh, and it seems counterintuitive now to talk about uh, stopping time within yourself, uh, forgetting about the past, or acknowledging the past and just let the past go, and not worrying about the future or the anticipated future. And uh, it comes as a, 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 it's a profound sense of awakening, really, when you understand that the only time we're, any of us are going to have, and we can debate this infinitum, like I mentioned just before the interview, trying to explain this is like trying to bite your own teeth. Mm. It's a very hard thing to do. But people who have been aware of this will know exactly what I'm talking mm. about. Time doesn't matter. Your thoughts don't matter, especially when they're coming from the past. 
because all they're doing is feeding off an energy. They're not needed, they're not wanted, they're not serving any practical purpose in your life. All they're going to do, these invasive thoughts that come into your mind, especially people who are suffering from uh, you know, traumatic uh, sourced anxiety, you know, they, they'll feel this. You mm. know, and, and once you start to let this go, my God, something else happens. Mm. You know, uh, and you don't go into some sort of a somnolent state. You become very alert. You become aware of everything that's around mm -hmm. you. You see things freshly. There's no prejudice. There's no anger. There's just uh, a feeling that everything is just as it is. So you just let go. And art is a wonderful, wonderful gateway to finding that sense of presence. And it's available to everybody, and it doesn't cost nothing. It's non-clinical, you're not popping pills to get to that state, you know, or drinking booze or yeah. whatever. It's just a place where you can go and anybody can do that. And I think that's what this programme is. We mm. know, if I talk about my wife and, you know, she'll be listening <laughs> in, is that she's got into colouring. You know, colouring has become, yeah. so she buys, buys these uh, colouring books yeah. that are from garden centres and other outlets. Yeah. And that, that peace of mind of just shading in the different Absolutely. patterns, and she's yeah. enjoying that. You know, for a, for a long generation, we most probably did art at school. Some yeah. of us continued that, but a lot of us stopped. And it sounds like some of us need to re-engage. I think we do. You know, I mean, uh, on Facebook last night, I just posted. Uh, there was a little quick comes up. You see these things coming on Facebook all the time. But there's one thing that really struck me, is that uh, the only time you're ever going to have is right now. Right. It's only here, mm. and. Uh, Right, so you don't have to, you know, be too concerned about this, that, or the other thing, but it's taking away things that distract you and may trigger things off, and that's the TV sat in the corner of the room. Switch that off, you know. Have a bit of silence around you, and I know silences are uncomfortable for, uh, for people, especially with an uh, anxiety disorder. Mm. But soon you get used to it and you welcome it. Yes. And you. You don't need to switch on the TV or the radio to find out what the next drama is or anything else. You know, you disengage. And there are other practices, you know, um, yoga, Tai Chi can help with breathing. Some yes. people go for gentle walking. You know, they might walk along a coastal path. Or Absolutely, and some people go surfing. Yeah. You know, lots of veterans go surfing and things like that. You know, I mean, I'm associated with you know a couple of surf groups. So you became yeah. you became aware that actually for you time was passing. And that, that made you feel good, that time passed? Maybe not going to bed at four o'clock in the morning, uh, but that, that's... Very surprised, uh, because you awake to uh, the outer world. You know, when you come out of that being in prison, you, and you wish you could stay there all the time, because it's a perfect place to be. As I mentioned earlier, you become very alert to everything that's mm. around you, and you can see things exactly for what they are. Uh, and you're not judging things, you're just allowing things to be what they are. You know, it doesn't need uh, your involvement in it anymore. And uh, all the practical aspects of your life, when you're in that state of mind, mm. uh, are dealt with in an order of priority that you never really mm. realised before, mm. that you could uh, deal with things in your life that uh, would sometimes stress you out. And you suddenly find that when you're in that state of mind, well, why was I worried about this? Why? And I've it's had nothing. I, I've had bits of that, you know, with busyness. Mm. And um, my my life is filled with music. <laughs> yeah. And you know, even listening to some of the old stuff that I grew up just takes me to a place where actually I can multitask. People say, "Do, oh. do you do stuff with music?" Yes, music, music, you know, enriches me. Mm. You know, and it, it, it fills me. So you were you were painting, you know, mm. and you, you realised this moment. You've done great work with veterans as we yeah. mentioned, um, yeah. particularly in Norway, and invitations back. Yeah. So you're helping others. So yes. I could just describe to us that kind of first time you're in a room with these veterans on our soil, you know, or, or abroad, oh, right, and right. how they engage with art. I sure, sure. Uh, the, the first big exhibition we had, I think, was in 2009. And uh, I, had a, I had an exhibition down in Falklands prior to that in 2007. Uh, which went really well, and we raised a lot of money for the Veterans Refuge down there. And uh, that was a trip well worth doing. You know, I took 17 paintings down there. Now, I wanted to do more of this because I knew we could engage the public very, very positively, you know, through art. 
uh, and the experience from uh, the Falkland Islands mm. certainly you know bore that out. And when I came back home, you know, the, the I wanted to do this again. And when I was in Exeter, uh, we managed to arrange for quite a major art exhibition. Okay. And uh, that took place with myself and a survivor from uh, a child survivor from the German uh, concentration camps in Poland from World War Two, a fantastic lady called Raya Herzig, uh, who's internationally well known, a fantastic character, and both of us uh, together. Uh, we put this exhibition up, and it was all about what we're talking about now. Yeah, all about what we're talking about now, and we, the throughput in that exhibition just blew blew me away. And then came the art workshops because it was the demand because other guys wanted to do this and get into it because they were interested in yeah. it. hadn't painted from school, but seen this as a route. So to just that describe for our, our audience, if if you can, there, John, that y you know you're at this event, you've got yeah. all the easels set up. Yeah. And the veterans come in. Yeah. How how do they feel about these blank canvases? And Nervous, I think, to begin with, uh, especially if it's not an environment that uh, you, that you're used to. Uh, so it's a matter of introducing it well and let people know who you are and what's going to happen. And we've this. got an image. And what kind of outcomes you're going to have? We're going to call up on the screen sure. so the viewers can see. And this is from Norway. This is from a, that trip. Oh, this is last year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But you were invited to Norway. Yes, I was invited to Norway uh, twice last year by uh, a gentleman called Per Rutedal, uh, who directs uh, the Norwegian Veterans Artist Programme, which is going quite strong at the moment. And over in Norway, their understanding of post-traumatic stress disorder is not quite there where we are. So there was a lot to talk about and uh, when we went over to Norway. And my first trip was to talk to Norwegian art therapists about my experience. And that was a very positive day, I must say. And uh, I've made friends that have lasted till today from that. Right. And then I went back, I met all the veterans organisations and seen the, the wonderful work that the Norwegian government does mm. for its own people. But here's the thing. Uh, this experience of transferring uh, our knowledge, you know, not just in Orbe, but to other places too, yeah. Uh, from what we've learned here at home, we're now starting to filter that out now to our frontline services here at home. You know, I mean, the police, paramedics, so on and so forth, because they've got nobody to turn to. They're in exactly the same position. If they put their hands up and say, I'm really suffering here, you're talking about possible loss of livelihood mm. and things like that. So uh, we are developing, we are getting better. And, and on that, you know, when I when I read and looked into the subject around mindfulness, we know that it's being explored in health, prison service, it is, yeah. uh, education and workplaces. Yes. You know, and people just working out the evidence around mm. that. But mm. actually, they, there's, there's some positive positive news about that. So that's, that's encouraging. You know, the bit I like that all of our conversation that we've had is the bit when you are in the now, the art mm. of now, is about somehow packaging up but actually you're living in that present moment. Yes, it is. It's about, uh, it's, well, it's about a pathway to the present moment. You know, uh, art in itself won't give you the present moment. It's, uh, it's your engagement with it mm. that will allow you to enter there. And it doesn't matter if you're suffering from you know, severe anxiety or not. It's open to everybody. And I think we'll have to end it there, because believe it or not, our, our time has beaten us. Uh, Pens, pencils, poetry, sculpture. My thanks to my guest artist, John McDermott, for joining me today, reminding ourselves to take notice of our thoughts, feelings, body sensation, and the world around us is the first step to discovering the present moment. For further information about today's conversation, please follow the links accompanying this broadcast. I'm Paul Norris, this is Hiblio.tv, and thank you for watching. <laughs>